Hello and welcome to BS with Bethany Simcoe. I am your host, Bethany Simcoe. Now I am watching the audio levels on my computer as we go because last week, turns out none of my audio is recorded on my mic. So we are making sure of that this time around. I am so excited for this week's episode. Last week we talked about habits and kind of forming a morning routine. This week, we're going to be talking about habit stacking. Also, I'm so excited because I just booked a trip to Puerto Rico yesterday. So our travel era is back on. One of my goals this year is to travel more to like to cooler places. So I'd like last year I traveled to like California and Utah and I was like, okay, I think we could do better than this. This year we're already nailing it. Okay, we're kicking it off. That goal is coming to fruition. So exciting. Also this week, I had a really interesting opportunity. I was approached by a brand about becoming an official athlete for them, but I would have to be exclusive with them. I wouldn't be able to talk about like other active brands, other wellness brands. I'm really, really struggling with that decision because I think it would be such a cool opportunity. It'd be really amazing to be a part of that community and a part of that group. However, I don't know if it's like the kind of community that I want to represent. So I'm really trying to make sure that I am locking in my values this week, understanding who I want to be, where I want to come from, what I want to stand for. Because I think my biggest thing for you guys, especially when it comes to like health and fitness, is knowing that, you know, you don't need to come from it from a place of like self-hate. Like it really is a place of self-love and self like giving yourself grace and just seeing like how incredible you can make yourself rather than like get in there and I don't even know the the mindset of like no BS I don't want any of your bullshit excuses my version of that is like no get in there and give me like your best like BS it like I do not care what you do. like I don't care if you don't know what you're doing it's okay like do it anyways just get in there and BS it so I'm like trying to figure out what their values are and if they line up with my values so I will hopefully have a decision with like the next week and with that I also have a very exciting event coming up which I think is going to be a big part of my decision because with that event there is a special there's a specific company that I'm going to be putting on that event with and they kind of are a competitor with the other company I know I'm not giving any names yet it might be a little confusing but it will all make sense very very soon the event is gonna be very fun i don't know if it's gonna be invite only or not but rest assured that this year my goal one of my goals is to put on an event that everyone is invited to that you can get tickets to that anyone can come to but even if this isn't one of those events you better still start looking for tickets to austin because we are going to put something on and it's going to be incredible because i've always felt like there's a little party planner somewhere inside me we're going to figure that out we're going to take her out of her shell and it's going to be so fun. Hop right into the 331 so then we can get into the meat of the episode. So my 331 is three things I'm grateful for, three things that I did well this week, and one thing I want to improve on or a goal that I have. And as always, I really encourage you guys to do this along with me. This is a really fun, almost meditation, like mind exercise. So three things that I'm grateful for this week are that I got to see my mom and my little sister. They came into town this week. My mom just left yesterday morning on Mother's Day. It was so nice to be able to see her on Mother's Day, though. And then along with that, my second thing that I was grateful for is that I got to hang out with my nephew. And he is just literally a week old. And there's something so special about just, like, holding a newborn, like, kissing their little head and, like, holding them. And they just, oh, he was like a little peanut, literally just, like, holding him, like, watching a show. Oh, my goodness. He was so special. So it was really fun to be able to hang out with my family this week. My mom and my youngest sister are the ones that I saw. I don't know if you guys know this, but I have four, four, four sisters. I'm pretty sure <laughs> there's a lot of us. I have four sisters, two brothers. So I got to see the youngest and the oldest this week and my mom. I'll be in a, up in Utah in June as well to see my other siblings and the rest of my family. Also, I'm so grateful that I have friends that will book trips with me. Literally booked it like so just like that. My friend Kate was like, hey, do you guys want to go to Puerto Rico? And we're like, uh, yeah, we want to go to Puerto Rico. The things I did well, number one, I made the goal to get a solid lift in every day this week. And I am happy to announce that I did it. Follow through. I feel so good. I feel so incredible. Like there was something just about getting in there and getting a lift in. Like it was really nice to kind of get back like in my groove. Uh, number two, I had a discussion with my therapist yesterday um, about how it's like a good thing to be selfish. And like we just kind of talked about like, of course, setting boundaries, because who doesn't go to therapy? It talks about setting boundaries. But I really do struggle, I think, with the concept of like, well, if this person's doing this thing, like, and they have this certain aspect of their lifestyle, I don't want to be judgmental and be like, no, we can't be friends because you do these things that I don't like to do. And she's like, well, you don't have to be friends with them while they're doing that thing. You can be their, your, their friend, like, set the boundary and let them know, like, hey, when you do this particular thing, it's really hard to be friends with you. And like, I don't want to be, I don't want to stick around for that. And she's like, it's, we've been taught 
that may be judgmental, like is a broader scope. And like removing yourself from that situation is not telling them that they are bad. It's not telling them that like you suck for doing this thing. It's just like, hey, that's like a different lifestyle than what I do. So I'm going to be over here. And like there's different, uh, there's a scale of like, you know, removing yourself completely from their lives or removing them completely from your lives or just being like, hey, when you do that, like when you do this thing, I won't be around. That was just a really interesting discussion about like being more picky with the things that I like allow in my life and like I, I I obviously really love being open and like being friendly to everyone I think that everyone deserves openness and everyone deserves kindness but I think it really is kind of important to realize like oh that behavior is not a behavior that makes me feel good so I prefer not to be around that or like well that behavior makes me feel really bad and I would prefer if you didn't do that if you continue to do that then you know we're not going to be associated or like we're not gonna be friends you're not gonna be in my life it does sound kind of harsh and that's what I'm struggling with. I'm like, I don't want to be harsh. I don't want to be mean, but I'm really working on the concept of putting my well-being first so I can show up better in my relationships. Also on the topic of being picky about here with, I don't, it, one thing I struggle with, like a message that I struggle with is like, you have to be alone and you have to isolate in order to be happy and successful. People are like, you don't need community. It's just you. You get yourself out there every day. No, community is so important. Being with people, being out, like, even at a party like I don't know it's just like so nice to have community around you people who genuinely care about you people around you like I think that sometimes it is really important obviously to have your solitude and be good on your own but also don't downplay the importance and how fulfilling it can be to have people around you so I just think that's like a message that I see on social media a lot so I just wanted to speak about that be like go hug a stranger like it's okay if we're humanity we're meant to be humans and humans love other humans and it's Anyways, don't I'm getting cheesy. Moving on. The third thing I did while this week was I gave myself a break. So with this event that I'm planning, I'm in charge of putting together a sponsor list, an invite list. Like there's just like a lot to go into this event and like has been a little bit like overwhelming. And it's not it's not that the task itself is overwhelming. It's just that I am so overwhelmed. And like there was a lot of emotional turmoil going on under the surface. And so I hate making excuses for myself when I'm like feeling emotional like that. Get it together. Like one of my favorite phrases, like professionals do it with a headache. Like just because your day sucks today or you woke up with a headache or you stub your toe doesn't mean like anything. Like get your act together, get your head in the game and go for it. Like, but I was able to give myself time you know like I realized that I was like you know what these emotions are meant to be felt in the moment right now so I sent a little text to the girl that I'm like planning the event with and I was like hey just a lot going on in my head right now like it's been a bit of a rough morning can I get you these lists and these numbers later right like can I can I adjust this deadline and that's something I hate doing so much because I feel like I'm being like so lazy and I'm like Beth, like get it together don't make excuses but I'm actually really proud of myself that I was able to move that deadline and relieve some pressure on myself so that I had time to just like sit and cry because I really needed that. But yeah, so instead of forcing myself to pull my emotion away, I was able to kind of let myself have that moment and then be like, okay, we we can get off our lives and I will be more productive and I will be more clear headed in a little bit. My goal slash like improvement for this week is ironically my wake up time. So I know our entire last episode was about like waking up literally at seven. Like our entire last episode is about a morning routine and getting that one morning habit locked in. And my one morning habit was waking up at seven and I sucked at that this week. So having my family in town, I didn't go to bed at a decent time. I didn't wake up at a decent time. Like I was just all over the place. So Moving on, giving ourselves some grace this week and we're going to get back at it. So on that same note, I want to talk about how you guys did last week. Um, how I want you guys to like kind of keep track of like how many times did you keep that promise to yourself? How many times uh, did you get up? Like what were your thoughts through this? How did you feel? I want to make sure that you're celebrating every single one of those successes. Like every time you keep that promise to yourself, I want you to celebrate that. Like that is important. Each one of those is vote towards your self-esteem vote towards your self-trust. So this is another week that you get to work on that. Even if maybe this week, like me, you didn't do it a whole lot and there were times you definitely slacked, there were still times that you probably did it. Or there were still times when you're like, okay, maybe I woke up 15 minutes earlier than I usually do. Or maybe there was like some mini success in there. Still want you to count that. I still want you to celebrate yourself for that. And then this week, go into it, not in a mindset of shame, but in a mindset of like, okay, you got this. Not of like, Oh my god, I didn't do it. I'm the worst. Like, no guilt, no shame. Just keep moving forward, keep doing it, keep keeping that promise to yourself. You can't build healthy self-esteem by hating yourself into it. You cannot hate yourself into healthy self-esteem. You have to, 
You have to build that foundation on love and trust and peace and all the goodness. Today is going to be a little bit of a cheesy episode, clearly. So there's no pressure. There's no timeline. Just keep doing it. Go back in for one more week and then another week and then another week and you are going to build that up, right? It's never perfect the first time. One thing I want to emphasize is that this is your choice. When we're talking about habit, goals, lifestyle, this is your choice. There's no shame behind wanting to stay the same as you are right now. If you evaluate in your life and you're like, you know what? I'm actually good. I'm feeling good. I'm perfectly fine where I'm at. Then great. Like that is your prerogative. I genuinely do love that for you because like that's the goal, right? And in some sense, I hope we're all happy with where we're at. I hope we're all like peaceful and content and proud of ourselves for getting to the point that we're at right now. However, if you evaluate your life and your daily mood and your energy levels, the way you react to things, the deadlines that you are or aren't making, if you recognize that you want a change in your mind, that is the first step. Like in that case, if you're like, you know what? No, I've evaluated and I'm like, I'm not very happy or I'm not very motivated or I'm missing a lot of deadlines. Like that's the first step. And this is for you. If you're already like, no, I'm good. Like, good. Like be on a little merry way. But this is for the people who are serious about that change, who are excited about seeing what's next, what's new, how they can get to where they want to go. Everything I talk about should not be overwhelming as well. That's another big point I want to make. If it is, there's always a different path you can take. There's always a different way you can break it down. Break it down smaller. Start slower. Do what you need to do to make these habits and these cycles something that you can carry with you for life. Like, if this is just something that you're like, oh my gosh, I have to drag myself to do this. And it literally is the worst. And I just like, this is so, I don't know. If there's any dread, I think is kind of the word I'm looking for. If there's any dread in your mind about these habits or these goals or these things I'm talking about, or it's like filled with shame or anything, like there's a different route you can take. There's a different entrance you can go into. There's a different door you can open. Like there's other routes you can take to make this something that fulfills you. It works for you. And this is not a one size fits all in any shape or form. So anything I talk about, if that's overwhelming to you, then find a different way. Like I'm going to give you a really quick example and then I'm going to keep going. When people talk about their hot girl walks they go on in the morning, they're like, oh, I listen to a podcast. That feels overwhelming to me. I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like that just fills me with dread. I'm like, I'm already going on a walk. Like that's already good for me. Do I have to listen to a podcast too? No, I listen to freaking Rihanna when I go on my hot girl walks. Like I listen to 2000 hits. You don't have to be like journal, meditate, walk, like whatever you're doing, you can make it enjoyable. For me, I'm like, if I had to listen to a podcast and if I made that a rule for myself while I was on a hot girl walk, I wouldn't go. I'd be like, oh, do I have to? I hate this. But knowing that I get to rock out to some freaking tunes while I'm walking, I'm like, sign me up. Get me out there, coach. So with that, I am not interested in a 30-day transformation. And I'm not interested in making you like, quote unquote, unrecognizable by summer. Like, I don't care about short-term fixes. That is not what I'm here for. That is not what this is about. I'm interested in long-term, fulfilled, peaceful life. Like, I'm interested in your lifestyle who you are as a person and things that you carry with you literally for life, things that you teach your children. Like I'm interested in waking up every single day feeling like I have the time and the abilities to tackle whatever that day has in store for me. So one of the biggest ways that I begin to do that is habit stacking. Now we're getting into the meat of this episode. I'm so excited to talk about habit stacking because this is genuinely something that has been very vital to me, very life-changing. So to make these habits seamless and brainless, that is the goal. I want to make them seamless and brainless. So I have room in my brain for other decisions, going into bigger, better things. Like the little things are taking care of themselves. I don't have to think about that. So I might brain power to think about my relationships in my life, my career goals, other things I want to get done. Like there's so much more space if I don't have to think about the little tiny goals and habits because they're just taking care of themselves. They're a part of my routine. They're a part of my seamless life. And I can think about other things. I'm going to give you a simple definition of habit stacking, and then I'm going to tell you my story with it. From what I've experienced and come to learn, habit stacking is attaching a desired goal or behavior to one that you already perform. So let me give you my example. Around like December slash January 2022, so like the beginning-ish of last year, I decided that I wanted to go to the gym every day. So I wanted to be a part of my lifestyle, not just something I picked up like a quick fix or to like lose a little bit of weight. Like I wanted this to be 
a part of my lifestyle, right? I've been going on and off for like a month or two at that point, but I would make it maybe three times a week if I was lucky, like that was on the higher end. So my daily routine looked like this. Wake up, get ready for the day, film a video, eat breakfast, drive to work, work at work, drive home, and then work a little bit more or like film or like work on my clothing right at the time, which was like Shops and Co. Eat dinner, maybe watch a little show and then bedtime. Like watch a little show, scroll on TikTok, whatever it is, like relax and then bedtime. And sometimes between work and show and TikTok and bed, I would peel myself out of my bed or away from my desk and into some gym clothes off the gym. Maybe. Sometimes if I mustered the motivation and the courage But going through this, I'm like, how in the world am I supposed to get motivation every single day? Like rip myself away from this and like literally drag myself to the gym. It literally like dragging my feet through mud. And I'm sure a lot of you have like experienced this. When you're talking about like motivation, you're like, how do you get so motivated to go to the gym? Like I'm at home. I'm in bed. I'm freaking cozy. Or like I am in the middle of working. Like how do I like peel myself out of this? The whole process. You got to get dressed. You got to like put your hair up. You got to drive there. You got to get in there. Like it's, it's a process. Doing all that can be very overwhelming. And so it's like, I I barely got myself in there. And the days that I didn't, I was so filled with shame and guilt. I was just like, oh, I didn't do it again. Like I didn't get in there. And like, I just felt so guilty. And one thing I've kind of noticed going through this is that when you rely solely on motivation to get things done, you're left with a lot of guilt and shame because a lot of times it doesn't fall through and it doesn't get you where you need to go. And around the same time, I started reading Atomic Habits by James Clear, still my favorite book of all time. And I credit that to a lot of the success and a lot of the progress that I've made. It has given me the tools to take the steps to go where I've always known I wanted to go. Like these things are so important and so special and so exciting to me, which is why I'm like literally setting up a whole camera and recording and editing just to like talk about these things that have made such a big impact in my life. I can talk all day about this, but honestly, listening to or reading that book is going to help solidify so much of what I talk about. One thing he talks about is attaching behavior to a task that you already do, which is like the habit stacking that I'm talking to you guys about. Like associating waking up and going to the bathroom with putting on gym clothes and boom, you're in your gym clothes. Then you drive yourself right over to the gym. That was kind of one of the examples that he gave. And I was like, oh, pause. Hold on. I am not a morning person. You've already discussed this. We know that I will not be getting up before I need to. Like, I will be staying in bed as long as I can. I knew that getting up and going to the gym before work was not going to work for me. It was not going to happen. I was going to dread it every single morning, and I was just not going to feel good. So I was like, you know what? After work it is. We can work this in after work. So then I added packing gym clothes to my morning routine. It was now wake up, get ready, film a video, pack my gym clothes, eat breakfast, and drive to work. Then after work, I would change in the work bathroom into my gym clothes. Then I would drive straight to the gym. Boom, we're there. It eliminated so much of the friction to just get to the gym. Because a lot of times, like, I swear that is the hardest part. And it didn't matter what I did at the gym as long as I made it. Like, that was the success. That was the goal. Because once you're in the gym, that's a whole other thing. There's so much more progress we made in there. I think the biggest thing for me was just like, okay, Beth, just get in there. I don't care if you're walking on the treadmill and watching TikTok. I don't care if you're attempting five push-ups, just like get in there and slowly you'll become more comfortable with the environment of the gym, with what you want to do in the gym. You just have to get in there because I promise you, you will not get comfortable at the gym from your apartment or from work. You have to be in the gym to get comfortable with the gym. Going on a tangent again, but seriously, like that was the success for me to just get in there. And from there, it opens you up for so much more progress. Packing gym clothes and changing in the work bathroom made it a million times easier for me to succeed and keep my promise to myself. If I let myself go home, I would lay down or scroll or put on a show or like work or get into comfy clothes. Like I'd get involved in something. And then it would be so late and I'd stop like make dinner. There are so many reasons not to go. And the pit of guilt just gets deeper and deeper like in my stomach at that point. I was just like, I know I need to go, but like I'm involved in this. And like the gym is so far away and like I don't want to put on gym clothes and it's cold outside. Like there was just so many reasons not to go. And then after all those excuses, I was like, well, crap, I didn't go again. Like I made excuse after excuse and I didn't go again. But like, here's the thing. I truly firmly believe that most people do not struggle with a lack of discipline or motivation. I think that most people struggle with the lack of the right tools. For me, habit stacking changed the freaking game. Associating changing into my gym clothes with leaving work 
worked really well for me. Sure, there were days where I was like, screw this. I'm tired. I'm having a bad day and I want to go home. But those were so much fewer and farther between than when I was at my house. I had to interrupt my cycle or what I flow of whatever I was doing. Once I made that a system and once I made that easy for myself and I stacked that behavior with my new habit I wanted to build, I made keeping my promise to myself so easy and I succeeded in my goal of going to the gym way more often than not. But I was the same exact person. Like I had the same exact knowledge and motivation to go, but it just made the decision seamless and easy. I had to go home anyways. I had to get my car turned on and move anyways because I had to go home eventually. So as I'm already driving, I'm already on the highway. I just go to the gym instead. Like that is just so much like there's so much less friction there. So just to recap, the habit stacking went like this. I had my behavior that I did every day, which was leave work. And I attached a goal or habit that I wanted to form onto that, which was changing into my gym clothes and heading to the gym. And of course, we had that thing in the morning with packing my gym clothes. I associated that with filming a video. That's like another habit stack. So there's like some more habit stacks you might have to kind of package in with this just, just to make your end goal like a little bit more achievable, right? Like I wouldn't be able to go to the gym if I had already packed gym clothes. So like there's there's multiple parts to it, but that's just kind of it in its simplest form. So now it is your turn to kind of associate these things into your life to analyze a habit or a goal that you want to form and we can implement this into your life. So let's pick some things that you want to include. And then we're going to find some anchors to attach them to. The things that you might want to include in your life may be going to the gym or stretching at the gym or going on a morning walk or listening to more podcasts, buying yourself flowers. Like who said these had to be self-helpy? Like maybe you just want to buy yourself some freaking flowers, you know, or cleaning or journaling or whatever it is. So identify one behavior that you want to start and let's find a flow. Let's stack those habits. It's really hard to like completely reroute your day and pivot when you're working or like pause your music and be like, oh, I should listen to a podcast now. Like, no, when you're listening to music, you're listening to music. You're not like thinking about a whole lot of other things. And if you're listening to a good song, like who wants to put in a podcast when they're in the middle of their favorite song? Like, come on. But connecting your desired habit to an event that already happens makes it so much easier, makes it flow better, takes off a lot of the mental weight. The goal is to make this as easy and enjoyable and sustainable as possible. I want this to be something that you keep with you for life, something that you just do. Like for me now, the gym is something I just do. Like it's part of my lifestyle. It's part of who I am. And it took me going over and over and over and over again to me being like, oh yeah, this is just what I do now. If there's a habit you want to form, pick a cue or an anchor. This, be this is the behavior you already do. And then pick something that you will also make it enjoyable if you need to. You know, like I gave an example listening to freaking Rihanna on my hot girl walk. I'm like, I already have my cue of like getting dressed. Like, like my morning routine, right? I have several cues for that that lead up into my walk. One of those is like opening the blinds and like going and changing in the closet into my hot girl walk outfit. And then, you know, eating breakfast and then going on my walk. Now on my walk, like I've already had all those cues. I've already had all those anchors to now set me up for my walk. When I'm on my walk, again, I like, I like to listen to music that is fun for me. I like to do something that's fun for me on that walk because I'm already getting the benefits of being outside, getting my heart pumping, getting my mind clear. But now I can also like, there's nothing that says that I have to listen to like self-help podcasts or like, no, like I'm already getting the benefits just by being outside and moving. I can listen to whatever music I want at that point. And like, you can incorporate that mindset into whatever. It's like, I'm at the gym. I'm already getting the benefits. Like I can listen to whatever. I can scroll on TikTok. Like, do what you got to do sometimes to get yourself there. And self-improvement is not miserable. It's really fun if you want it to be. Life is so exciting. You get to make it what you want it to be. So why make it miserable? You know, that's just like one thing that I kind of want to steer clear of is I feel like sometimes it's just like, how many ways can we like improve ourselves? You know, like, holy cow, like I sometimes feel the weight of this too. It's like, how many ways do I have to change? Like, do I have to feel guilty every time I scroll on TikTok? Or should I be like listening to a podcast or researching or reading instead? It's like, no, if you're at the gym and you're on the treadmill, there's nothing wrong with playing on a show and watching it. Like, there's nothing wrong. Like, I heard someone one time that they had like Dr. Pepper in their like water bottles and they would be like on the treadmill or on the Stairmaster or whatever. And they would just like sip at their Dr. Pepper because like it got them in there and made them look forward to it. They did what they had to do to get in there and like get the benefits, make it a part of their lifestyle. Like maybe once you're comfortable, you can readjust things. But still, like I really want to focus on this not being miserable, but being something that you look forward to, that you're excited about and that you 
can sustain through your lifestyle. This is not just something to do in your teens or your 20s or your 30s or not just something to do for a month challenge. This is building blocks for your future that you're going to continue to use just to keep your life peaceful and happy. Going back to those anchors, here are some examples of what I'm going to call an anchor behavior, sometimes called cues. Here are the examples in my life. Okay, getting up in the morning to pee or like slash turning off my fan because I sleep with it stupid cold in my apartment. I don't know what it is, but I overheat so bad at night. So in the morning, I wake up and I'm so cold. So my cue is I wake up and then I open my phone and I turn off my little thermostat and then I'm like, okay, well, I like wait for it to like warm up for a second. And then I like literally run out of bed and turn off my fan. From there, I'm like, okay, well, I'm up. So I go like pee and then do my skincare, put my contacts in. And then I'm awake at that point. Like I'm up, I'm out of bed. So I'm like, okay, I'm out of bed. The next cue for me is making my bed. That's a big anchor that I've had in my life is making my bed. I've always made that a point to make my bed and like have myself feel like I put together. Like I really feel like it just kind of is one of those things that I have emphasized. So I'll make my bed and then open my blinds. So those are both kind of two things that I do anyways. And then it's time to change into my hot girl walk outfit. The anchor behavior or the cue is opening my blinds. And then the new habit that I'm attaching onto that is getting dressed for my hot girl walk. Then from there, gotta eat breakfast. So I make breakfast and then immediately leave. So my cue for there is breakfast. Oh, and water, right? Because I like to try to drink as much water as I can in the morning. So while I'm eating breakfast, I'm drinking water. And that's my cue. And my behavior is my hot girl walk. Then I'm home. I'm ready to go about the day and blah, blah, blah. We do our thing. One that I'm currently still building because it it gets me. But listen, when I go to turn off the shower, I turn it to cold. And then I stand there and I hate my life for about 30 seconds. And by 30, I mean like 10. And then I just turn it off. So like my you is turning the shower off that's my anchor that's what I do anyways and then I just turn it to cold I stand there and then I hate the world and then I turn it off I hated people when they're like ice baths and cold showers I'm like literally go away like that sounds miserable it works and I'm so mad about it like I literally just feel like my skin literally tingles like it is the weirdest rush and I'm like I wish that it didn't do that but it does and I feel so awake I feel so energized I feel so ready for the day and I'm so mad about it but it really does work and it's becoming a part of like my everyday shower routine. So after I get back from my hawker walk, I take a shower and then as I'm turning the shower off, I'm like, okay, turn it to cold. And then you turn it off and you're like, oh, I actually feel really good. So it's like 10 seconds of whatever. And then I honestly have come to kind of like it. So things to consider when you're building your habit loop, your habit cue, your anchor and your attached behavior. So let's say you want to journal at night and you always close your blinds at night. As soon as you close your blinds, that could be your cue to be like, okay, let's pull out my journal and let's just write a few things down. Maybe it's like turning on your lamp. Maybe you turn off your big light and you turn off your turn on your lamp. Maybe as soon as you turn on your lamp, you can pull out your journal and just write a few things out. Like it doesn't need to be like a whole dissertation. Just like write a sentence or two, whatever you want that to be. Maybe you want to start doing that three, three, one, like meditation sort of thing. Like for me, I do it with like breathing, like I'll breathe and then I'll do my three, three, one. And then I'll like breathe until I like fall asleep. Like it literally is like part of my nighttime routine. And so if you want to do that, like laying in bed, you can be like, okay, what are three things I'm excited for? Or three things or sorry three things I did well three things that I am grateful for one thing I want to improve and then for me one thing I add in there as well oh and we could do a whole episode on this because this makes me so excited like that has been a game changer for how I determine quote unquote success for the day another cue you can do is like sitting in the car and like I know that the second I pull up somewhere I like turn off my car and I like pop on my phone so fast I don't realize I'm doing it I have started the cue of like if you want to journal As soon as you sit in your car and you open your phone, open your notes app first. Journal literally three sentences or just like a sentence or two, like whatever it is, just like document how you're feeling in the moment, something that happened to you that day or something that's on your mind, like whatever it is, just like write down for a second. Just open your notes app and journal for a second and then go on TikTok, like do your thing. If you're going to be on your phone anyways, just like make the most of it you know like see what you can work in there or if you genuinely want to like not sit in your car after you pull up somewhere stack the habit of your anchor is that you pull up and you turn off your car or you put your car in park the second you either put your car park or turn off your car or whatever it is open your door like in the same motion turn it off open the door it's really awkward to sit in your car if your door is open so now what well you're probably getting out real soon. If you want to like increase your protein intake, you can make a protein shake as you're putting on your gym clothes. And that can kind of be your habit stack right there. Gym clothes is what you already do. Or if you want to stretch more when you're at the gym, I'm sorry, a lot of them are at the gym because that's just like 
one of the main places that I have seen a lot of these work. So that's just going to be one of our, a lot of our examples. So headphones on stretch. Your cue is headphones on. That's your anchor behavior you do anyways. You put in your music. And then you're like, okay, music's in now. Or if you have a hard time like getting out of bed and like getting dressed, one thing that helps me a ton is putting on music, like putting on a song. Honestly, having music on in the background helps me complete tasks so much more. If you want to be like buying more flowers for your house or your apartment or whatever, like I think having fresh flowers is so fun. I have like lilies on the table right now. And I think it's so fun. I love buying flowers, but I always forget. So whenever I go get fruit, I always buy raspberries. There's something about raspberries, man. I freaking love them. So every time I buy raspberries, I go flowers. Like in my mind, I've associated raspberries and flowers because the HEB that I go to, like the grocery store I go to, fruit and the flowers are very close together. So every time I grab raspberries, I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, flowers. So just like associating those two in your mind. Or even if you want to listen to more podcasts, you can do that while you're grocery shopping. Like pick a podcast as you're getting in the car or like the night before. Oh, that's another one I wrote down as well. Like pick a podcast out the night before and cue it for your drive to work or cue it for the grocery store. Like make it easy. Don't make yourself pick a podcast like in the moment because sometimes that can get like stressful. You know, like maybe I'll just not. But like if you pick it out beforehand and you already know what you want to listen to with the audio of the podcast, like putting that in as you go to the grocery store or putting that in as you do your daily task, like whatever it is, like maybe as you're cleaning, you want to listen to a podcast. Just make it clear and make it concrete and make it as easy as you can. Don't make yourself make more decisions than you need to. The point is to like make these not even choices anymore. Just things that fit seamlessly in your routine in your life. So again, you don't have to think about it. You can use that brain space for other aspects of the day. I want to emphasize one more time. Don't make it miserable. Find some way to look forward to it. No habit loop is complete without the reward. So for example of rewards, because we have our cue and then we have the habit and then we have the reward, which is like basically what I've been talking about, like the anchor and then you have the new behavior and then how are you going to make it enjoyable? So for example, my walk reward is that it is me time. Obviously, I have my fun music that I listen to, but also like I'm a nicer person when I've gone on my walk. It wakes me up for the day. It's where I get some of my best thinking done. It's where I like write a lot of like the scripts or the bullet points or the ideas for podcast episodes. It's like it really just grounds me, reminds me that social media is not real, reminds me to like get out and touch some grass. Like I truly love that walk. That's a reward for me. It's very fulfilling. It's very rewarding. My reward for opening my notes app and writing down a sentence or two about how I feel in the moment or what happened that day is that one, I get better at identifying my emotions and two, I get to go on TikTok afterwards. So that is quite the reward. Thank you very much. And just like a last few thoughts here. Habit stacking is also often coupled with the phrase 1% better every day. Weirdly, that makes me feel more pressured. Like what I'm doing today isn't enough because I have to outdo myself and do it 1% better tomorrow. Like maybe I've got the wrong idea of it, but honestly, it helps me more to say the phrase don't self-sabotage. And that kind of calls me out in moments where I'm like, oh, I don't want to. Girl, don't self-sabotage. If I know damn well I'm past my bedtime and I want to wake up at seven tomorrow, but I'm scrolling, I'm stuck on TikTok, I'm texting whoever, I hear the phrase in my brain, don't self-sabotage. I'm literally making my life harder by staying up. And I'm like, oh, that's true. Yeah, like I, it's going to suck tomorrow because I decided I wanted to stay up. Like, don't self-sabotage. Set yourself up for as much success as you can tomorrow. Or if I'm grumpy and I don't want to go to the gym, it's like, don't self-sabotage. Stick with the plan. I promise you'll feel better for it. Or going to sleep and not feeling like cleaning up or like something like that. Just don't self-sabotage. Or like if you hate that your dishes get piled up in the sink and you are just exhausted and you're like, whatever, just put it in the sink. Let it pile up. Don't don't do it. Don't self-sabotage. Alternate phrase is set yourself up for success tomorrow. Reminding myself to do everything in my power to set myself up for success, like to make my life easier. If I can pick up a few things off the floor and it helps me tomorrow to have a clearer head, absolutely. Hell yeah. Or if I'm tempted to just throw my clothes on the floor and just like, ugh, I'm like so done and just like get in bed or whatever. I don't know why I'm in bed in all these examples, but I can remind myself not to self-sabotage, just put them away so I don't have to power through it later, right? Just like put it away right now so I don't have to like go through and like, clean up a ton later I'd rather put up one shirt right now than like seven you know a few days especially when I'm like doing hauls and stuff oh my gosh okay that's such a privileged thing to have just said but sometimes when I'm like doing hauls and I just like unboxed stuff and there's clothes strewn across the floor and there's packaging and like plastic bags and I'm like oh my gosh I just filmed 
I need to go edit and I don't want to clean this up and like I'll just leave it for later like every single time I'm like that do not self-sabotage pick it up right now there's no reason to leave this for later just like before you edit just set your phone down give yourself literally count down from 10 just gather everything up like you just sometimes I have to take them in like bite-sized pieces and just like grit my teeth and do it right now because if I save it for later it's going to build up so much bigger and I'm probably not going to actually get it done. I'm going to be overwhelmed. So I say, do not put this on the future you. Do what you can right now. Or even at the gym, if I want to slack on reps, I'm like, come on, Beth. Come on, girl. Like, don't self-sabotage. Don't just take the easy way out. Set yourself up for the dumpy you deserve. Like, don't whip out on this last set. You got this. It basically boils down to do this one small task right now to make your life easier in the future. Anyways, we can do a whole episode on that as well, but take your new habit from last week and just see if you can stack something on top of it. Our example was waking up at seven and now this week you can combine that with another task or habit or behavior and start linking your new morning routine together. You can start using that old habit as your anchor and then link something else onto it. Whatever you feel like you are ready for, it really is like a chain. You really do have to just like make sure each link is solid before adding on another one. Because if you just like keep adding them on before making sure they're solid, before like, like making sure that they're set, they're ready to go, you'll just get overwhelming and your chain will not be able to bear as much weight. So we are in this for the long haul, right? Like an example that kind of just came to my head, like in this chain metaphor is like, if you are just like stacking all these chains, all these links on top of each other, like anything can rock that. Like that chain cannot carry very much weight. Like if you move, if your lifestyle changes, if something happens, you're not going to be able to recover those habits as quickly as you could as if you like spent time. And we're very intentional about like being serious about these goals, taking the time to solidify those goals. So if there is life changes or if there are things that happen, you always can go back to those. You always can like pick them back up. They're just a part of who you are now instead of like starting from scratch. So if you haven't already, I really do encourage you to take the time to either write down or mentally know what you want to implement this week. It might be easiest to start with your morning routine, again, since that's what we focused on last week, but you really can take this anywhere. As always, do not hesitate to DM me. Like, tell me about your goals. Tell me what's going on this week. Like, that excites me. That gets me so happy to be able to see how you guys are implementing this. Hearing that what I have to say, like, is actually helpful or seeing how it changes your life. Like, I think a while ago, someone told me that they had, like, listened to some episodes, or, like, listened to me talk, and they decided to move across the country. And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, that is freaking cool that's freaking wild to me and i'm so proud so if you're watching this on youtube don't hesitate to use that comment section like as your little journal as your accountability partner talk to me tell me what's up i hope this is something that can like contribute to real life change for you and make your life more peaceful so you can continue to like build that trust with yourself this has been a very fun episode. I think that this is like a lot of what I just truly love talking about, truly love getting into. I'm so excited to see you guys next week's episode. I actually don't have a plan for next week. We are flying by the seat of our pants because that's kind of how I roll at this point. And I think you know that. I think that you know that I just throw some BS together and make it happen. We make the best of it and it's so fun. So thank you for joining me today on BS with Bethany Simcoe. And I hope that you go forward in this next week feeling good, feeling happy, and build more trust with yourself. 